there. These NASCAR fans want to see some nationwide action, and we do too, so we hope we're just a moment away from going back to green flag racing. They know when they come to Lowe's Motor Speedway, as they have seen tonight, we had two laps of green. We've already had some pushing and shoving and two caution flags and even a brief red flag for a shower. But uh, back in the spring of this year, a lot of pushing and shoving, 12 caution flags for 44 laps. Caution for the 11th time tonight. Well, I'm guessing that contact on the racetrack was not accidental. Uh, Denny knocked the fender off his car. Well, I'm not happy about that. 83 looking out for his teammate. Not going to take it. They're mixing it up down in the pits there. Somebody's going to punch somebody. <laughs> for some reason, you know, he picked my back tires up uh, in the middle of one and two, pulled up beside me, so I retaliated. He doesn't like when guys race them hard. Well, I'm, that's the sport. I raced them hard, and he didn't think that was cool, so uh, he decided to take my left front fender off. You throw a rock, I'm going to throw a concrete block back. Her brand's chances of having a good run, but it just tore the fender up. I mean, no, no excuse in it. Don't impress me by having your whole crew over here. You know, bring the driver over here and let us talk about it. That's how it ended back in May. Brad Keselowski came home with a pretty impressive third place finish despite that rubbing and shoving. He is third in the point standings here with five races to go. And they're trying to be able to catch Carl Edwards. He's got his work cut out for him right now. He is uh, over 300 points back of Clint Boyer. I don't think Brad was thinking about that he could, could get to Clint Boyer, but it, a second spot uh, still is within reach. We got the uh, one to go signal here at the line. Ready to go back to some racing. Jamie McMurray was our pole setter, picking up uh, his second pole of the year and only his eighth start. Won the pole at uh, Gateway out in St. Louis. He has led all 14 laps thus far. Jeff Burton behind him in a 29 car, making his final start here in 2008 and is yet to go to victory lane. Let's check in on McMurray. Dave. You know, Doc, uh, you and I covered uh, qualifying earlier for the Nationwide Series, and Jamie was so exuberant about his pole. And maybe that's because his car was so darn tight in practice. Tight, 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 tight. It was this whole weekend. And finally, they got it loosened up for the pole qualifying run and uh, running very well so far out in front of everybody. And, uh, but that, you know, at this racetrack, uh, historically, this track, what, gets tighter as the night goes on? Well, you know what I found interesting when we talked to Jamie Murray before the race or heard him speaking, he was saying that PK was telling him this racetrack was going to get freer because it was going to get more grip. The front was going to stick better. So they were anticipating that that tightness coming out by that. That has been the trend this year with the new, with the new Goodyear tires is the car seemed to get looser, not tighter. And we've always seen that in the past. There we go, Jeff, Jeff Burton said he's loose and didn't want to tighten up now because he thought the track was going to get tighter. So we'll see who was right here. Back to green flag racing. Watch that 20 car. Here goes Burton on the high side. Yeah, Joey Logano got him. Look like he learned from those first two starts. Jeff Burton on the outside of Jamie McMurray. This is what we've seen on these restarts that the high line is the way to go. Well, Burton was ready to go to work when that green flag came out. Now he's going to get some help up there from Logano in the draft to behind him, Kevin Harvick. Yeah, he knows he knows there's grip up there because they had a I mean I had a Sprint Cup Series practice before this race and those cars were all over the racetrack. They were running from top to bottom. Remember Rusty's words where you got to strike fast here at this racetrack and Rusty has had a lot of success here over the years at Charlotte. Wow, what a great battle these guys right up front. Joey Logano right there on Jeff Burton's bumper giving him a little push. They got him out front. This 20 car looks strong. I think he's got the idea of taking the lead right here. Oh, yeah. On the outside of Jeff Burton. He's just looking for an opening right here. I believe he's found it. Remember, Logano has not raced here, so he's, this will be the first time that he's actually been in competition. He's been here to test. And in less than 20 laps, he will take the lead. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Came from fourth to first since the restart. Carl Edwards making a move inside of Kevin Harvick, and... Uh, Boy, Logano Shannon's on the move. Well, they certainly are, and this doesn't surprise me. I actually spoke with the team under um, that caution flag during the rain delay. They told me they, this is the first car that they have built for Joey Logano. Basically, they took the car from Kentucky. Of course, that was a great car for, for Joey Logano, and they made this one with the same specific specification. So the team has a lot of confidence in this car, and of course, they have a lot of confidence in their driver as well. As well, they should. Pretty good battle there. Remember Kevin Harvick and Carl Everett, they've already had one shoving match here this weekend. Let's see what happens on the racetrack. Lap 20, because time by. Let's see if uh, Edwards can get it. I don't believe Kevin's going to make it too easy. Well, these Kevin. guys are pros. They're going to handle this on track. 
a little different than they might handle something off the track. Yeah, Harvick had already made the pass since the restart on Carl Edwards. You see that bottom groove, it's just hard to make that pass. You get out, you can get to the inside and the shorter way around, but you can't make that, you can't complete that because the guy on the high side's got more momentum and is able to get back to the throttle a little bit quicker. Brian Clawson, by the way, in the 40 car, back on the racetrack. Derry Cope has gone to the garage, as has Johnny Chapman and Terry Cook. Those three cars in the garage here. There's the five car of Jimmy Johnson trying to move to the high side of Boyer. That would be for sixth place. Yeah, I think Jimmy's figured out, too, that this high groove is what's working. He's yeah. getting up there trying it out, and he's passing the two car, Clint Boyer. Yeah, and right behind him is that guy Brad was talking about. It might be pretty good. Kyle Busch on the high side and moving towards the front. He's already up into the eighth spot, trying to take the seventh spot from Clint Boyer. See, how about Carl and Harvick? They're still side by side here. Little Carl and Kevin show here, and uh, they better look in the mirror because here comes Jimmy and Kyle and Clint. These two guys been in close proximity about the whole weekend, hadn't they, since they got here yesterday. Great shot right there. You can see, though, that, that Kevin Harvick we watch from his own board. Just gets that little bit of a run down the straightaway. Carl comes back in the corners, taking the shorter way around. See, Kyle Busch has got around Jimmy Johnson in the five car. It looks like he can run that bottom groove and get about a car length through the middle of the corner, but to maintain that car length, you have to use the whole racetrack coming off the corner. And uh, if you got a car outside, you can't do that. Check it on Kevin Harvick. Mike. And you know what Carl Edwards is doing, keeping Kevin Harvick to his outside hip. That may be the best move. Harvick's crew chief told me they've been set up to run the low line through turns one and two, but the high line through three and four. And right now, Edwards able to keep Harvick pinned on the outside. That may be helping him, guys. And Mikey's able to make the pass. And by keeping the door open, he's going to let Kyle Busch try to go by as well on the inside. Back up front, Logano, Burton. Jeff Burton didn't let Joey Logano get very far at all. He did take the lead away from Jeff Burton, but uh, Jeff just shattered him the whole way here. Looks like Joey's gone back down to the bottom of the racetrack now. 35 car, Danny O'Quinn Jr. also has gone to the garage. I mentioned this a little bit ago, the 90 and 91 have gone there. Chapman Cook, and as is the four car of Derek Cope. Yeah, the kid here, we're talking about the 12 car, Justin Allgaier making his very first start in that 12 car for Roger Penske in the Nationwide Series. Doing a pretty good job. They're battling for 21st position. See that highlight still gets that run down the straightaway. Dives back in the inside. Carl washes up a little bit there as Brad Keselowski comes back to the inside. The reason Brad Keselowski is back in 22nd spot is his car got real loose in qualifying. And uh, that might play into his hands if the track tightens up like we talked about. I'm not sure it's going to, but he had a loose car in qualifying. Here we see Marcus Ambrose making a pass. Clint Boyer continues to slide backwards. That's going to put him uh, back to the 10th spot now. Yeah, Marcus had qualified seventh and dropped back to about 11th or 12th position and now picking him off and going back the other way. So he goes back around the two car to take the ninth spot away. We've got a lot happening right here. Yeah, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Chase Miller in the 19. Gillette Everham car. There is David Stremme, who had uh, had a, a difficult qualifying session at a start toward the back of the pack. Yeah, but he's made up 12 spots, and he's already up in front of these guys. You see that 88 car still real loose. Yeah, man, he was trying to, he keeps working that inside and trying to get by the, the 12 car, but he just can't make that move work because he's so loose getting down into the corner. More on David Stremme. Shannon. Doc, David Stremme was happy with his car this week, and he felt they were very strong in final practice. So I asked him what happened in qualifying. He said the same thing happened to me that happened to a lot of drivers, the sun. He said the qualifying was much cooler towards the end of that qualifying session, and he just got burned by that those hot temperatures. Stremme qualified 32nd, but uh, was second quickest in happy hour. Here, Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch continues his march towards the front. Takes that spot away for the fourth spot from Carl Edwards. You're looking up on that scoreboard, he sees that 20 car on top. <laughs> he says, I got one of these Joe Gibbs cars, too. Let me see if I can get up here and race him. Yeah, I think that's a little more incentive for him. So the 18 car is on the move, Kyle Busch. 
after starting back in 16th position, but his uh, teammate, 18-year-old Joey Logano, is the leader in his very first start here in Charlotte.